Good morning. Uh, my name is Carlos de la Guardia. Uh, I'm going to give this pyramid tutorial. Um, thank you very much for being here. Uh, it was kind of a struggle to get the tutorial going. Not enough people were signing up, so I thank you each and every one of you especially, <laughs> because thanks to you, there's a tutorial after all. Um, we are going to build a very basic uh, application, uh, and in this way we'll, we're going to learn how to use Pyramid. Uh, the, the tutorial is, uh, the objective is to create a simple Twitter clone, and, and we'll start uh, with, with just a, a Pyramid scaffold, and then we'll go from, from there. Um, and so what we are want to do today is uh, learn about Pyramid, how to write a simple application with it, and we'll be improving it by stages. Um, and of course, if you have any questions along the way, I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, we're also lucky to have Chris McDonough here uh, back there. He's the author of Pyramid. Uh, so if, if I mess up, I, I'm, I'm sure he'll correct me. And uh, okay, uh, I hope y you have some fun learning Pyramid, and and we can get a good tutorial going. Um, is anybody installed Pyramid? Uh, if if not, there's no problem. Yeah. If you raise your hand, if you were able to install it. Okay, th th no problem if, if you didn't. Uh, I have all the code here, and, and uh, I'll pass it. I pass it on, so you can you can copy it. So if anyone needs, it, would you please uh, pass it on? Hmm? No, it's it's just the code. Um, I was not able to to get a, a virtual box uh, running, so I I don't have one. Uh, Yeah, all, all you need for, for running the code is actually, if you have Python, uh, Pyramid does not require anything special, so you'll be able to, to install it. Um, all the code is there in, in, in GitHub anyway, but uh, I, I also included the Pyramid documentation in, in, the, in the USB. And in, the, in the pyramid tutorial things, and um, I I have three shirts, three t-shirts to give away to some of you. <laughs> uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. Probably uh, I'll just uh, pick some of your email addresses at random and and give them away after we're finished. But unfortunately, they have not arrived yet, so uh, you will have to look for me. Uh, uh, I'll, at the end of the tutorial, I'll, I'll give instructions about how this can work. So, um, the first thing that we're going to do is um, outline how the tutorial is, is going to work. Um, it's a very simple application, what we'll be working with, uh, and we'll, we'll work with it on the stages. In, in the in the code that that I gave you here, uh, you'll you'll find the code for each of the stages, so you could run each one separately. And uh, so we'll we'll just walk through a little pyramid concepts, and then we'll uh, we'll start looking at the code for each stage. And throughout it all, I'll answer any questions that you might have. Um, and just a little bit about me. My name is Carlos de la Guardia. I, I live in Mexico, and I've been doing Python development for years, uh, and web stuff also for a long time. Um, I'm one of the Pyramid contributors um, since it was known as BFG or way, way before it was uh, it, it was joined with Pylons and, and became Pyramid. And I, I really like 
pyramid and I, I like web development in Python. Uh, so uh, uh, really my family is really big for me and, and it's hard to be away from them, but, but I think teaching pyramid is, is, is a great thing to do, so. I'll do that. I hope that at least uh, you have some familiarity with web development, uh, uh, general know knowledge about how the applic an application works, uh, general concepts that, that we use, and of course with Python. Uh, I mean, we're not doing any rocket science here, but, but you should have some Python experience. And of course, uh, hopefully you really want to learn how to write a web application and, and write one. So, uh, anybody doesn't have Python experience? A little bit. Uh, a little bit is enough. Uh, and uh, everyone familiar with web application concepts in general? Great. Who has done some development with other Python web frameworks? Uh, for example, Django. Uh, not not a, lot of you, a lot of you, okay. Good. So uh, Pyramid is part of uh, what we call the Pylons project. And this is about uh, creating a set of related web technologies that, that are Python-based and, and uh, modern, and, and, uh, and at least to us, they, they are fun and flexible. Um, Pylons used to be uh, a web application framework. So there was some confusion at first when, when Pyramid came out. As we said, it, it's part of the Pylons project and people remember that Pylons was a, a web framework. So there was some confusion about, well, it, Pylons is Pyramid or it, it's the same, it's just a new name or, or what. The thing is, uh, Pyramid was known as BFG before and, and uh, and it it had all the all the concepts that, that are part of pyramid came from from that part, but uh, the pylons people were thinking about moving uh, creating py the pylons two version, and uh, in the process they found that many of the things that they wanted to do were already done with with pyramid, so uh, it became an easier thing to do in, instead of reinventing the wheel to join the the two communities. Uh, besides, there was a good report between the different communities. So uh, uh, after a meeting uh, in Las Vegas, it was decided to, to join the projects and um, Pyramid was the new name that was chosen for the web framework. And it's not uh, Python, Pylons 1 compatible. You have to, to do some special things if you want to run Pylons code. But uh, it embodies all the uh, concepts and ideas that made Pylons successful. So uh, from now on, there's still a Pylons 1, and it's a stable, and it's maintained. I mean, there are bug fixes and all. But from here on, Pyramid is the future of, of Pylons style web development. So we'll be hopefully doing development in Pyramid for, for a long time. There will be other projects under this umbrella. So far, we have several uh, tools that, that are used together with Pyramid. For example, the Pyramid Debug Toolbar and, and, and several extensions that, for example, uh, skeletons that allow us to develop applications using Pylons 2, Pylons 1 concepts uh, and facilitate migration from, from Pylons to, to Pyramid. But uh, like I said, the future is Pyramid and, and Pylons project. We kept the umbrella name because we are trying to still join forces with other communities like Turbo Gears, and uh, hopefully in the future there will be more uh, Pylons project tools. There are already some more high-level tools that allow you to create content management systems, for example. So Pyramid is, is a web application framework that features uh, a number of concepts that are really important to us, and uh, one of them is simplicity. Uh, we try to make things 
easy to understand and, and, and easy to do for the developer. Um, we don't force you to know everything about Pyramid to be able to create a simple application. You can start, you can start small, and then as, as you progress, you can get things more complicated. Um, it's minimalist. It doesn't try to do everything. Uh, it doesn't have an ORM. It doesn't. It doesn't have uh, default uh, uh, tools that, uh, like Django, for example, that mean interfaces and and, uh, and database backends and stuff like that. We are we allow actually to use whatever you want. You feel more more comfortable with. Um, but in, in, in even though we are a minimalist thing, we are pretty big on documentation. Everything that's on Pyramid is documented. Every new feature, every everything that 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 comes from Pyramid, any any box fixes, any documentation changes, everything is documented. And we aim to have a very very thorough documentation. Right now, we have a. My manual style uh, book of Pyramid that it's included in, in the files I gave you, a PDF that's really big. And uh, at this moment, there's work being done on the documentation uh, to make it uh, even simpler. A professional editor is trying to simplify the, the, the text, the contents, the redaction to make it easier still to, to grasp. So we are very big on, on documentation, and, and I think that's a very important thing about Pyramid. Uh, openness, uh, we, we encourage uh, actually users to, to use um, any technologies that, that they like and, and we, we want Pyramid to be flexible enough to work with, with it. And we also have a very open community process where everyone can participate. Uh, it's pretty easy to, since it, the code is in GitHub and, and if you if you want to participate, you can just clone the repository, make a change, and make a pull request. And even small documentation changes are welcome and encouraged. And so you can participate in the community even if if you know very little, just by reading the documentation and starting to suggest documentation changes that 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 you find useful. One of the things that Pyramid has is it's a lot of speed. It's very fast. It's it's a very fast framework. And and your code will be running, and, and it's fast in, in part because it does very little things, it just concentrates on, on, on what it has to do. And we also want it to be very reliable, so, uh, so that you, you can be secure in that your applications are going to be working well and not exhibit strange bugs all of a sudden. There are some inspiration concepts be behind Pyramid. Uh, Django, in part, Django has great documentation and, and, uh, and the way it does things it is very easy to understand and, and grasp, so that was one model. And also SOAP, uh, I don't know if you have heard about SOAP, it, it has somewhat a, a mixed uh, history of success and, and uh, and many people also accuse it to be a bloated piece of technology. But many of the, of the concepts that, that we use on, in the underlying framework come from, from the experience that we've had with, with SOAP for, for many years. The main pyramid developers have been working with SOAP technologies for 10 years or so, so uh, many concepts that, that we think are useful uh, were transferred to, to pyramid. Uh, but you don't need to have anything about SOAP to use it. No. Not even... You don't have to know anything. And of course, pylons, uh, the community and, and the, the objectives of the pylons projects are, are huge here, and or what drive the, the Pyramid project. Pyramid is right now at version 1.3 beta. Uh, there will be a release probably very soon after PyCon. Uh, it's, I, I think, in the second beta, uh, something like that. One of the big things of this new 
uh, version is that it's compatible with Python 3.2. So it, it's, it's one of the first medium frameworks that, that is Python 3 compatible. It's also, I think, Bottle and Py, Cherry Pi, I, I think they are also Python 3 compatible. But Pyramid is one of the, it's a little bit bigger than those, and, and it's compatible with Python 3.2. So the community, in, Python community is pushing hard for the adoption of Python 3, so, so we think that being compatible is, is a good thing for driving people to use Python 3. And also for newcomers to the language to dive into Pyramid quickly. There are other features uh, that, has, that this version has, like configuration introspection. There are many convenience APIs for handling uh, stuff like relative URLs and views that are forbidden, not found, etc. The Pyramid have uh, already code for handling these things, but now it's a lot simpler. You can basically just use a decorator and get get some uh, behavior going, and then doing it the right way. Like I said before, everything is completely documented. Uh, we keep adding new documentation. Uh, there are how-tos, there are tutorials, and uh, we always encourage new, new people when they have a question in the IRC channel and, and they got, get it answered to, to make a short how-to or a short tutorial to teach people how, how they solve a uh, problem. And also there are many people that have begun contributing pyramid add-ons and applications. Uh, we've reached the point where the, the repository is very active with people sending patches and pull requests in for the main pyramid code for documentation and also people that that is uh, announcing new new tools built on pyramid. So uh, every Wim framework has, has a purpose, and, uh, and of course, not every Wim framework is perfect at everything, so uh, Pyramid is no exception. One of the great features of Pyramid is that it's very flexible. Um, when, when you get a, a framework like Django, for example, you, you get a, a, a way of doing things, uh, a database backend, uh, an ORM that, that, is, that is used throughout all the applications. And uh, that's great because you can start pretty quickly with Django and, and get going and create an application that has an admin in interface and has database access and everything. But sometimes when you need more flexibility, uh, all those uh, infrastructure, all those rails can get in the way. So, so we, we want Pyramid to be very flexible in case you need to do things differently or combine weird tools uh, uh, in different ways. Uh, Pyramid is, is very good at, at, uh, at using different technologies together to, to get what you need. So if, if you need to have control of, of all the parts of the application and, and you want sometimes to fine grain uh, code and, and change the way uh, things work by default. Pyramid is a very good framework. It's truly pluggable. You can create uh, code uh, that lives in an, a different package, but uh, plugs in with different, with another different package, and, and uh, override a template from a different package, or use, or use a view from a separate package in your application, or s stuff like that. So uh, if if you like to do things for yourself and you have like control, Pyramid is a very good choice. We also try to make it very simple to use for, for small applications. You can create one file Pyramid applications as well. So it, it's, it's also a good, a good framework to get started because you can get started with a simple file and then go from there. So if you want to use Python, uh, Pyramid is certainly a, a great a great option. So, um, 
we're going to try to install Pyramid. Um, um, it, it runs in all popular Unix-like systems. Uh, I suppose most of you have Macs or, or Mac OS. Does anybody has, uh, have Windows? OK. We do need a Python interpreter. Is there anyone who has not Python installed on their computers? Good. Um, we need version 2.6 or higher. And, um, and one best practice that Pyramid suggests is to use virtual lamp. I don't know if you're familiar with virtual lamp. Um, basically, it's it's a tool that allows you to create a standalone sandbox for for Python development, where all the packages are are, are installed separately of, of the system's Python, and this allows you to to in, play and install anything that you want on just the sandbox, run it, and and not worry about. Uh, conflicts with whatever is installed on the system's Python. So we're going to use that as well. Yes? Um, I, I don't understand. Oh, okay. Uh, is this size of text? Uh, I think we are going to create the virtual lamp right here. So if you can copy the files to your local directory and you have Python. You can just change the directory to. Um, you'll probably need to have these in setup tools installed. Uh, does anybody not have setup tools installed? No. It's install command. Maybe I, I should point them to the file that, that is. Uh, Does that have an, uh, an underscore? So you need to go to, to this. If you don't have setup tools installed, you, you need to go to this 
I'll just download this file. You can just save us. What's the name of the? Um, it's actually a website, or we could use. Oh, the website. Channel. Okay. Either, either one, whatever works for you. Yeah, I think people might be better off with the website. Yeah. Have you spelled it correctly? Uh, D I S T U S. On discourse.com? And it's PyCon dot discus. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, dot, dot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can sign in with, like, whatever social media thing you have. And it's the first one on the right. I didn't actually know about this. <laughs> But if people don't have an account, they are not going to be able to. Whoops. Well, in case, in case anyone can sign up there. Here is it. Sorry? I've got an internal server error when I tried that code before. When you try the. Um, uh, I got an error the first time, and, and then I tried again, and, and it worked. <laughs> I, I didn't even know about this, this site. But it, if anyone can connect here, that, that's a good way of sharing things. Now, if you, if you save this file, You can copy it into the into the directory that that the pyramid tutorial files are. And then you run it with Python. You have to write write access to. So it's there now. If you don't have EC install, do you have it? Uh, then uh, right now. Uh, what do I, what do I run if, I have EC install? if you already have EC install, uh, you can now create a, a virtual M EC install virtual M. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. you will. If if you already had if you already had a virtual lamp, uh, make sure you have a recent version, or, because it, it by default it isolates the environment from the system packages. But if not, How are people doing? Do, do you have the virtual lamp downloaded already? And we're going to create one virtual lamp. That's called M. Just in case you have a, an older version of, of virtual lamp. You can pass the no site packages flag, which which will make make sure that that your environment is isolated from from the system Python. What it does is basically create a new Python executable in in this directory, so that you can use that Python to download packages and install the pyramid applications. So I named the virtual environment, I named it emb. And so what will happen is that you will have a directory emb after you run this command. Even if you don't use pyramid, uh, virtual emb is a, a great tool to have in your toolbox. So I, I encourage you to, to give it a try for, for all your work in Python. It makes things very simple. Keeps all isolated your your packages and you can have different versions of of packages installed in different virtual lamps without any conflicts or even have a virtual lamp set up with a different python than the system python a different version for example so who has been successful creating the virtual lamp you had a, a problem Anyone else has problems? Yeah. Oh, you also don't have the development tools, it seems. X, X code. Chris is a Mac expert, so whatever he does, you do. <laughs> well, the rest of you, did, you were successful creating the environment? Great. Okay, well, well, well they see. Uh, you have Python? You can use the, the, the system's Python. Okay. 
Okay. So, um, and inside the virtual lamp, you will see that there are three directories, bin, include, and live. Uh, sorry, I'm not... And inside uh, the bin directory, you will find that, that we have a Python command, and then this runs the Python interpreter separately from the, from the systems interpreter. And we have pip and easy install, which are for installing the new packages. So when you install new packages using this Python, they will be put inside the virtual lamp and uh, separately from any system packages that you have. There, there's also an activate command there that, that can be used for uh, setting the shell up to pretend that your environment, uh, that, that your main Python is, is this. So if you type Python, it will use this one instead of, of the other one. But I, I usually prefer uh, to use the, uh, to run Python like this using the directory. It, it always makes it clear for me what, what I'm using. I, I would encourage you to do the same. So if you have been successful this far, you should be able to run bin Python and have a and have the Python prompt appear. They don't have the X code. Now, to install Pyramid itself, you can just do in is install Pyramid. Pyramid is rather small, so you should all be able to download quickly. Uh, and after you do the easy install, your bin directory in the virtual env will look like this. Yep. How the other one? Oh, okay. Um. 
Here it is. There is the, the command here that I use. Make sure to use the bin prefix to use the, the one in your virtual lamp. So who was successful in installing Pyramid? Most of you. Uh, anyone had problems that I... The command? Once again, I remind you that we use the bin prefix to be able to use the Python that we installed in, with virtualm so that it's isolated from, from the system. So uh, now that you have pyramid, uh, yeah. it can be a timeout. Just uh, run the command again. It will start when it when it left off. So you, you don't have to download anything, everything again. Now we're going to write our very first pyramid application. Um, so you open a text editor and create a file. Uh, I'm, I'm naming it Hello PY. Yep. Do we have to activate the environment with uh, No, uh, I I usually run it with just bin uh, Python bin is installed and and that uses the the virtual lamp. Um, I prefer to do it that way. If you want to activate it, it's it's the same. It works the same way, uh, except that you don't have to type bin now after you activate it. What, what he means is that there is this activate, activate command in, inside the, I think you have to say shoot. Um, I don't think it, it, I never use it. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Or activate underscore this dot file. Ah, source. Yeah, it's it's source. Yeah, that's. Yeah, now it's. If you activate it, you will see this. And now, when you type 
Python, it will use that one. Oops. I really don't have a lot of experience with that. So now we're going to have to write this application in a text editor. On the same place, emp, that you're standing, just create a file, name it hello py. At the same level of emp? Yeah. Okay. Oh. oh, yeah, the, the color scheme is not good. Um, not sure which one. Maybe colors. <laughs> no. 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 I think colors should be here. Instead of using a theme, just maybe. Ah, uh, that's it. <coughs> yeah, thank you very much. And go ahead. Anything that helps. Okay, thank you very much. That that was really helpful.
So I, I wanted to type this in directly to give you the feel of, of how creating a simple application is pretty quickly with, with Pyramid. Like 11 lines of code and, and you have a working application. Oh, I missed a line, sorry. Sorry, what, what was the question? No, uh, the, the thing is I, 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 I forgot a line, <laughs> sorry. And you were right. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I, I missed one line. So how is it going? Everybody has the code yet? So who has completed the code? Okay. <clears throat> we'll run it first and then explain it afterwards. Um, the, the code is also in the handout, so if, if you have not finished copying it, you can continue copying from the, from the handout. Oops, I did something wrong here. I forgot the quotes. I'm sorry. I I forgot the quotes in around main there. So
Jesus, I put the codes wrong here. I shouldn't have copied and pasted. So after my two typos, what's you know, main has the quotes and hello world doesn't have the quotes. Sorry. But it's it's correct here. So everybody has the, the code now. We can run it with bin Python, hello py. Okay. And after you run it, if you leave it running and go to the browser, you should be able to type that URL and, and, and see this result. Whatever you put after the hello, that's what will show there. Yep. Just to start with bin Python, and then uh, I'll show you. Um, I have it here. Where's the shell here? Here. That's when I run it. Yeah. Pyramid config import configurator, and then what do I change? Sorry. It's a, it will read configurator. It's not. It's, it's saying configurator instead of configurator. Uh, let me show you the code again. So. Uh, if. So are you sure you're running with the virtual amp? Just run bin slash Python, then hello py. Okay. Next. Perhaps the pyramid install didn't finish. Oh. But there's yeah, it's it's correct. Oh, oh l let me see it again. Yeah, it's correct. Okay. So maybe um, you need a change. Do again bin is install pyramid. Yeah. Maybe something is missing. I just closed my terminal window. You closed it? I mean, it, I thought it finished when we started typing the code. And then I was doing something, I hit control D. Yeah, but that's the only explanation I can think of. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, uh, it's running, so now you can go to the browser and... and yeah.
Okay, I'm fine. Oh. <laughs> Anybody else has problems running the application? I'm getting a request in the terminal, but it just comes up with my phone. So. Uh, can I take a look at the code? Oh, it, it's not paralysis. It, it, it's uh, um, one of these brackets oh, okay. uh, around name. <coughs> and uh, the nine is not, should not it, it's a parenthesis here. And I think that's it. Try it again. Still no look. Can we see the code again? <laughs> uh. Oh no, no, I, I was uh, not clear. The, not these brackets. The, the other, the one on top. Oh, the curly ones. Yeah, the curly ones. Now it should work. You can probably use the op arrow to get the past commands. Yeah, there it is. Anybody else has problems? I restarted Xterm and uh, I tried running and this one getting us response. Um, do I need to it's running. You, you can now go to the browser and, and try it out. Uh, localhost uh, colon and, and then just know the, the port number it's 8080 no without the slashes and then a slash hello and something whatever that's the name of the hello hello no no a slash and then whatever you want your name or something. Got it. Uh, I have a double slash there, and uh, I, that shouldn't. Can we look at the code? Maybe there's there's a mistake somewhere. Syntax is apparently correct. Uh, yeah, those are the brackets. Wrong name. Hello, world. Looks correct. Can I can I take a look at the at the message on the on the shell where you run it? <coughs> Here are names. Oh, it's name. No, Thank you. You having problems? Yeah, it, it's there. Um, so I'm missing. I'm still missing the module. I usually install completed. When you don't, when you did, you did is installed permit. Yeah, let me go back up. So easy setup. No, no, no the no. easy install pyramid. But inside, you you should do it with the bin. Bin is installed. So go back into. Easy install pyramid, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's the deal. Okay. Yeah, you need to. What's the URL that I need to use here in the browser? Uh, lo <laughs> Localhost. No problem. <laughs> Without the HTTPS. Because it will try a different port. Uh. Was it? Oh. Uh, uh, colon. I copied it. 
Yeah, that, that's correct. You want the URL is uh, eighty eighty, which is a port that we used, and then a slash hello. No, uh, it has to be lowercase. Slash your name, for example. There it is. Um, so how are you doing? Everybody run run the application correctly. You should you should see you should see the hello message there. Everybody got there. Great. Yes. Um, yeah, there are a couple of. Uh, well, SQL Alchemy, does it run? Hmm? It will run SQL Alchemy. Well, let me show you the depths. So let me show you. These are my. my But Cryptacular uh, is installed on until the it's only on on the last stage, so he could run everything. Uh, time ago is not trick, by the way. So now that we run the code, you should have seen the hello message. And as you can see, anything that you type after hello is used uh, to display. It's the one that we say hello to. So if you say hello myself, it, the, the, the view says hello myself. If you say hello Tony, it says hello Tony. So whatever you put after hello, it's, uh, it's there. So now, what are we doing here? First, we do an import of the whiskey server that we're going to use. Are you familiar with what a whiskey server is? Basically, uh, it's a, a Python process that, that serves web pages, and, and it does that. Well, serves web applications, and it does that um, using a standard that's called whiskey. Uh, that's defined in a pep for Python. A pep is a document that defines how things should behave in, in Python. So that's another way to say that it's a standard way of serving web applications using Python. And there are several whiskey servers that, that can be used. Um, in this case, we use that one, the whiskey ref, because it's included with Python. So you don't need to install anything extra. You just can run it with a simple install of Python. And that helps keep dependencies for the example to to a minimum. Then Pyramid has a concept of of configura configuration for for an application. Whenever you you are creating an application, um, you need to create a config object, and then everything that's done, adding views, adding routes, uh, is done inside the, the, the configuration object. So what we import first is the configurator from, from the pyramid config module. And then uh, we import response, which is a whiskey compatible response object that allows us to, to send the HTTP response that the, the browser will see. So that's all the imports that we need. Next, we create a view. A view uh, in pyramid is any callable that returns a response, basically. Uh, it can be a function, like, like in this case. It can be a class. It can be a method of a class. Uh, it can be even an instance. So it's pyramid is very flexible. The only requirement is that it receives a request parameter, and uh, it returns a response object. So 
The request comes from the browser. Uh, it, it includes the URL and any environment var variables that are passed in by the browser. And uh, the response it, it should be a, a compatible response for HTTP, and which we have when, when we import pyramid response. So this view, what, what it does is pretty simple. It receives a request, and then it uh, says hello and passes in the name of, of a person. Uh, the, the brackets for name should be the curly brackets. Uh, I don't know why they look like this on my screen. Oh, below here. Yeah, there. No, I, I mean below. Here. Okay. And this is the dictionary syntax that, that we use for interpolation in Python. So when you, we say uh, percent name, we are telling it to get the key that's name from a dictionary and use that at there. And the dictionary that we pass is called request match dict. When a route matches, a pyramid inserts uh, a variable called match dict, which has a dictionary with all the, the, the results of the match. So in this case, whatever we're getting in the match dict dictionary, we use the name key there to display what's there. So how does the match pop, uh, dict thing get populated? When you run the code, we put the name equals main thing, so we can run it directly with Python, like we did, Python hello h hello py. And then uh, we create a configurator object, config, well, configurator. And uh, Pyramid allows us to define routes in pretty much the same way as other frameworks, using a pattern, regular expression for, for defining the, the route structure. Basically, a route is a name for the route with a pattern that is used to match against the, the path info from the URL. So whatever goes after, after the host name uh, slash, that's, that's the path info. And we pass it here uh, simply hello and a parameter called name. What this means is that whenever a user puts the URL hello, uh, and put something, whatever, uh, after the, the second slash, uh, the route will match this route named hello. And when the route matches the match dict that we uh, specified before, it's going to be populated with the keys that match. In this case, there's only one name. So the brackets mean that this is a parameter that the route is going to get. And uh, that's the way we specify a route. We can have, of course, more complicated uh, patterns, but this is great for a start. And then, now that we have a route, we add a view. A view is what you get once there is a match for, a, for this route that we created. It has to be, uh, it has to pass the request to, to a callable, a view that, that is going to execute whatever the, we need to do on, on, on the view. So um, we add a view, and if you, you notice, we use the hello world uh, callable that we defined above. So we're telling it, we're telling Pyramid that hello world that's defined there is going to be a view that is going to be used when the route name that matches is hello, which is the only route that we have so far. We could add several routes and, and different views that match different route names, and this is the way to do it. Um, and finally, we create a Wizzy application with the app config make and serve the make the server. This is the port that we use. That's why you had to use uh, the 8080 on, on the URL. You could put other port here. If you use 80, you, you can uh, skip the port number, but you have to run it as, as root because ports lower than 1,000 need root permission. And we pass it the app that we created, which is the Wizzy app. And notice that we use config 
to make the app. That means that it uses all the views and routes that we passed in before. And then we used served application. The last two lines are actually not pyramid specific, it's just a way of running the, the application. So the actual pyramid app is the view plus the four lines that are there. And depending on which whiskey server you're using, you would probably run it in different ways. Uh, any questions about this? Uh, you, you would need the, the user to to put exactly that on the URL. If you have another slash, it will match. You can add as many as, as you wish, and you can add several parameters as well. Um, but of course, the, the user will, will need to, to know what URL he's going to type, or, or you will need to direct to that URL from, from the browser. For example, uh, if here's a route, a route that doesn't match, Ah, uh, it's not running, sorry. <coughs> sorry? What, what, what? Ah, that's what you meant, a, a wildcard pattern? To, to yeah, with the, the star. You can do that. Sorry, I, I didn't understand the question. Uh, in, in the documentation, we have uh, all the cases that we find. Um, yeah, there, there are several ways of passing parameters and, and so on. Uh, the documentation is where you want to go to, to do that. Um, any other questions about the code? Does it do you understand what, what it what it's doing? So it, I think it's pretty easy to grasp. Uh, just creating a configuration, adding a route and a view. And the view can be any callable and return whatever you want. Uh, so this is the basic py pyramid. Uh, application and, and from here you can roll the thing a bit. So if there are no more questions about the code, we're going to take a short break because my computer's battery is about to run dry and uh, it was impossible to set it up without probably messing up the audio and video and we didn't want to do that at that moment. But anyway, there was a, a break scheduled, uh, and I think if there are no questions about the code, it's a good moment, and then we can continue with the application right after, after the break. So since you all have Pyramid installed, it will be very, very quickly to, to get running the, the demo code uh, after the break. So, uh, uh, excuse me, do you know how long the break should be? Of 20 minutes? Okay, so uh, it's 10.30 and... Sorry? <laughs> 20 minutes, okay. So in, in uh, 20 minutes at 10.50, we'll reassemble here and get going with the other code.
Okay. Thanks for your patience. We we had a bit of a technical problem, but uh, we're back in business. Let's go back. So uh, right now, what, what we did was run a very simple application. And uh, most of the time, you'll want to do a, a bit more complicated stuff with, with, uh, with Pyramid. Pyramid includes several scaffolds that allow you to get started quickly with an application, at least have some skeleton of an application that you can use for, for working. So uh, one is uh, the starter, which is a pretty bare bones application, as a pyramid. Then we have the alchemy template that it allows you to uh, use SQL alchemy. Though pyramid doesn't have uh, an ORM as part of pyramid itself, we do encourage people to use SQL alchemy, which we consider is, is the best Python tool for for database mapping available. Um, it's not a requirement, but this template comes ready to use it. So uh, it's very good. Uh, like I said before, one of the objectives of Pyramid is that you can mix and match whatever tools you find best for your, for your own re requirements. Um, so um, you would probably, if you like using NoSQL, you can use it. And if you like to use SQL, you can use SQL Alchemy. And if you like, like us, are an all-time SOAP user, you, you might like to use the CODB, which is an object database in Python that, that is used by, by SOAP. The only problem is that it's not compatible with Python 3. But uh, that's really mainly useful for people who already know uh, what the CODB is and, and what it does. But, but there's the option of, of using it. If, you want. There are also other third-party scaffolds that are available. One is named Aket. Uh, yes, Chris? I just want to it's no longer a scaffold? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, if you want to work with Pylons code, and for, for, for example, if you want to migrate an application from from pylons to pyramid, you might find Aket useful, though, as Chris says, it's not an, a scaffold anymore. To create a scaffold, you use the pcreate command. Um, I, I have to pass it the name of, of, of the directory, right? Ah, dash yes. I forgot that. Oh, it went by really fast. Um, what I did was use this command. And it will create a directory called Alchemy. The name of the scaffold is Alchemy. You can use whatever you want here. It will just create a directory with this name. Has everybody run, run the command? After you run that, you will see uh, an Alchemy directory.
And this is st structured, uh, it, this is no longer a single file application, it's structured like, like a Python package. If you're familiar with Python packages, they all share this similar structure. They have a setup py and a setup config on, on the top level. Uh, you usually have a readme manifest changes files. They are not required. And one or more configuration, configuration files. This is not part of a Python package. It's just what, what we use for web, web development. Um, Baster and, and other web servers, web servers use uh, config file in this format. INI and uh, Waitress, which is a server that Pyramid uses, also uh, recognizes this syntax. And inside the Alchemy directory that's here, you th this the actual code of the application. The structure that Pyramid uses basically has views, which is the uh, where we put all the callables that are going to be used, and models, which is where we put the actual database models that we're going to use in, in an application. And that's basically the, the structure of the code. We usually have one or more static directories where we're going to put uh, images and JavaScript, style sheets, etc. And the templates directories where we put the actual web templates that, that we're going to use. Let's take a look at, at the package. I am in, oh. This is the initialization. It's pretty similar to what we did with the single file thing. We first define a we get a configurator and, and we define it. Now, instead of running it with main, uh, what we want is to create a whiskey application that can be called by the server that we use. So in this case, instead of running it directly from here, we are going to return an application that's going to be run in the whiskey server. Again, we can use whatever whiskey server we want. Like, in this case, Pyramid uses one that's called Waitress. And it used... Before Waitress, we used uh, Paster, the, the server from, from Paste Deploy, but um, it's not compatible with Python 3.2, so that's why we had to change the server to use Waitress. And Chris actually is a developer of Waitress as well. So uh, that's the reason that we're not using Paster, which probably you will be familiar with in name. Um, now, in, in this case, the template also includes SQL Alchemy. Uh, in addition to the configurator, we use SQL Alchemy. And we create one engine from, from configuration. This is all SQL Alchemy standard thing. We create an engine. Um, the settings are, are passed to uh, the pyramid main function. The main function is, is what what Pyramid calls when it starts up to find where, where the application is. And it passes, Pyramid passes the, the, the main function, the, a global config, and the settings that, that are captured from the INA file. We're going to look at them in just a minute. So when, when it says settings here, it refers to those settings that Pyramid got when it started up. And then we configure a session. This is SQL Alchemy standard stuff. And we create a configuration. You remember the first time we did a one file application, the configurator call was empty. We, we didn't pass any parameters. In this case, we're passing settings, which tells uh, the configurator to use the settings that, that we got from, from Pyramid startup uh, when creating the configuration. The next part will be pretty familiar now that, that we cover that. Uh, we create a, uh, well, not really. This first part, you haven't seen it. Pyramid has facilities to create a static view. And a static view is one view that is going to be used just for serving content, uh, files, uh, like PDFs or something like that, or uh, 
mostly CSS, JavaScript, and images. They are going to go in, in the static directory. Uh, Pyramid encourages the use of, of stat a static directory at, at the top level, and, and in this case, we suggest that it's called static, and uh, it, it has some support for, for caching of the resources. You can put match h, max h here, and, and it, will, it will set the headers for caching. And uh, once you add a static view, you can, the user could type uh, slash static and get all the files directly from, from there. So this is not code that, that is working, but just passing the files directly to, to the browser. In addition to our static view, we add a route, which is a simple route name home, and the pattern is just root, which means that when you go to the root of the application, it will. And then, this is something else that we didn't see on the first attempt, it config scan will scan the, the, the files for view definitions. In the first example application that we did, we added the view here. But if you want to have several views, um, you're going to end up with a long list of views and, and then come back to refer to this list whenever you're, you're working. And Pyramid allows to also define the views using a decorator. And uh, that decorator means that you can have an executable and just decorate it with, with the view. And in that way, uh, the view will be added to the configuration. To actually add it, we use a scan. This is because Pyramid doesn't want to cause any third, any side effects when, when, when running the code. So, uh, so the scan is necessary. The, the decorator doesn't do any magic at all. It, it just marks the view as as something that, that is going to be a view, and then the scan actually may, uh, puts the view in the configuration. So that's why it's, it's needed. And then we just return uh, with the application, and that's, that's what we do. Any questions about this? Okay. Now the views case, very simple, we just import the DB session that's going to be used for the application that we defined on the init. And then uh, my model is the actual model that, that is going to be used. That is the, the database table that, that is going to be used here. Um, you can see the decorator that I was talking about at the top of the callable, my view, and, and there's a view config. And if you recall the syntax that we used before, it's very similar. You say view config, then you give a route name. And one new thing here is that instead of, of just returning a, a response object, we are going to use what Pyramid calls a render. A render is something that's used to to pass uh, um, the result of a view to a template, because it's usually what you want to do when, show, when using a web application is show uh, the results of some calculations on a template, and which is HTML. And uh, there are several templating languages that you can use. Pyram Pyramid comes with Mako and, and Chameleon, which are two templating engines, but there are bindings for others, like Jinja2, for example. And the renderer actually just takes a template name and allows us to, to pass the results of a view as a dictionary. So we don't have to initialize the template or run the template code or, or anything. We just set up this as a renderer. And when the view is run, it will use whatever we return here in the dictionary as the values for the, for the view, for the template. The view, it's actually pretty simple. It just does a query of the my model, model and uh, filters by name, once to one, one. And as you can see, we return a dictionary. And the values that are here, the one and the project, are passed to the, to the template engine. 
so that it, it can use that as, as variables on, on, the, on the page, on the actual page that renders. So here's the template, and it has a lot of tags because it's it includes the pyramid logo and, and other stuff. But the thing that interests us here are the... This is a Chameleon template. It uses a language that's called CPT. And basically, it allows us to pass the access attributes. In this case, you can see that we can call... Uh, we get the request object, and we can call functions. And we can also use the values that we pass in the dictionary as first top-level names. So we pass project, uh, and here it is. And what this does is, um, when we get here, whatever was passed in, from the view in project is, is going to show up here. Yes? Um, what do you mean? Well, Pyramid has no uh, controller per se. In the, in the view is the controller. Yeah, you could say that the view is a template uh, and the controller is this callable. Whatever. Yeah. Well, we actually don't use those terms, but uh, in, in effect, that's, that's what, what happens. If you're comfortable with that terminology, uh, then the controller would be this one. Yeah, it's mostly a terminology issue, but... But yeah, m many people are familiar with controllers, and so you can think of this as, as a controller. Hmm? Yeah, Django is similar in that you get a view and it's a callable and, and you just return something, a response. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, it, it, here we call the, the DB session directly because this is where all the processing takes place. There's no separate place to process it. In fact, the models just define uh, the SQL alchemy models. That means uh, this is not a pyramid term per se. It's it's more more like this is these are the SQL alchemy models that, that we're going to use in the application. So it's a pretty simple model. It's just a, a, a table with a ID, name, and value, just just to have something to show in the in the, in the scaffold that allows you to know how we're going to, to call it. Names, but this is this is just SQL alchemy. There's nothing pyramid specific in this in this part of the code. Let's take a look at it. If you uh, run the the pcreate command. Um, You can run the application with this. If you are on the inside the directory of that we created with the pq8, you can run the, the application using pserp, which is the command user 
used by waitress to serve the page. And then you pass the name of the configuration file. We're going to take a look at it in just a moment. Whoops. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I forgot a step. Since this is, since this is a package, uh, a Python package, we have to, to actually install it in, into the interpreter. And this is done in all py Python packages of, of this kind by running Uh, set up py develop. Let me. F the Requirements like SQL Alchemy that, that are part of the application, they are specified in the setup py file. So when you run this, it will look at the requirements and download anything that, that's still not installed on, on your machines. And now after you run that, you can actually serve the application. It will probably take a couple of minutes to download. They are located here. And it's a top py file. And this, this is a require section. This is standard Python stuff for, for distribu distributing packages. All the packages that are in in PyPy, in, in, in the Python package index. So the they, they have uh, yeah, the, the requires, they, they change. Uh, in fact, if you are developing an application, uh, you are supposed to put here whatever requirements you have that are different from, from the scaffold. So if, for example, if, if you are going to use, um, for example, what could be another library, um, for example, I run out of ideas here. Huh? LXML, yeah, or, or whatever new library you, you should put here the, the name of the egg that the package on the PyPy. Beautiful soup, for example. Yes? Okay, yeah, to be, to be exact and specific, uh, the setup py is a distribution and, and the actual packages should be in the code that's inside. So were you successful in running setup py develop? Sorry? Yeah, the, the, the scaffold does that directly. It doesn't do anymore? Oh, it used to do all the versions. Yeah. 
take what it takes. Like this. Okay, the other thing after you complete the setup is to run. The populate alchemy command. And that will create the database using the model that we defined. The directory. Yeah, if you name your directory differently than I did, uh, use that. You will see that populate something in, in your bin directory. So who has trouble running the develop py or, or the populate? Everyone was able to create the, the database. And, you know. So after you do that, you can run the application. Notice that this uh, template, it, it uses the port fi 6543, so you have to put localhost 6543 on the hook. But you get the URL here, so you can use that. Yeah. Depending on, on the on the path that you created, you will see if you created a, a directory with a different name than I did, you will find uh, populate and, and the name. The command is populate, okay. and you pass it the name of a of a, the development ini file, the configuration file. Oh, I say there was. In this case, it was already populated, so it doesn't work. You should get this this page when when you go to the to that URL on the browser, and you will see that the name of the project that you passed in is here. So the template, everybody was able to to get here. The the template includes, uh, in addition to SQL Alchemy, in this case, it includes a tool that's called the Pyramid Toolbar. 
which is here. And uh, it's a development aid that you can use to, to see different things, information about the, the new story. Yes. I tried to do the question about what version of Python you're running, what packages are installed, the versions that has um, the settings for your application. Um, you can take a look at the HTTP headers. So it's very useful when you are developing. See what's, what's going on, the request attributes, the cookies, everything that's here. Renderings, if you remember, we had a template that's the one that renders and it, it spots some values and here are the values that are passed to the template. So you, you can take a look at everything that's going on. Logging for the... It has also performance so that you, you know uh, the CPU time, the lapse time, etc. You can take the look, a look at the configure routes. In this case, these are set up by the toolbar itself, but here you see the, the routes that we defined, like the static and, and the home route is here. Yes. Uh, this page is the routes in the uh, slide, uh, in the init the init py file. We define the routes. It's not on views. And these are uh, the routes, and this is the view they are connected to. So the route is defined in the init py file, and the view it's connected to is defined in views py, and it's this one. There's also an SQL alchemy panel that lets you see the queries that have been made against the database, so you can take a look at what's going on with the database access. And there's other tabs. Uh, Pyramid has a concept of twins, which is like some sort of pyramid-specific middleware. Uh, for example, the debug toolbar is one of those. It, a twin, what it does is sit be between your application and, uh, and the request, and it, it gets the, the request first and, and can do some processing. For example, if you need to change the headers or, or add something, uh, for example, um, like the toolbar that adds another view that, that is displayed for, for showing this. So they are very, very useful to have that. Where does that get enabled or disabled? Uh, um, in the config, config file, you're, you're going to see it in, in just a second. And this, uh, it also has some introspection facilities, so you can know everything that's inside the code. This, is, this goes even to the level of showing you the lines of code that are. So uh, we definitely encourage you to use the, the, the book toolbar for, for development. Now let's take a look at the INA file. This INA syntax requires you to define an, an, an application uh, that's usually called name, main, and, and this application will use the, the package that, that we have to find the code for, for the, the alchemy, which, whoops, uh, which is what Chris was mentioning, was inside the alchemy thing, with, which contains the views, the models, etc. And... Uh, there are a few flags that are useful for development. For example, reload templates. True means that whenever we are working and make a change on the template, we don't have to restart the server to, to see the change. We, just, we can just go to the browser and, and take a look. When you're in production mode, this is usually turned off so that uh, it, it, you gain performance. But for development, this is turned on. And you can also debug authorization, but we are not using any at this point. And uh, in case you have problems with, with the routes, you can 
set up other debugging flags like route match I've not found. Uh, debug templates is also useful for development. And uh, here, the includes is where we define the twins that are going to be used in, in the application. In this case, the debug toolbar and the pyramid TM, which is a transaction manager that makes sure that, that uh, whenever there's an error, the transaction is aborted. It's especially useful if you have more than one database connection because it synchronizes it the commits between different databases. And then the actual SQL Alchemy configuration is here. We pass the URL for, con for, for connecting to the database. In this case, we're using SQLite, so we just pass the, the, the path to the database file using the SQLite. That's the application. After we define the application, we, we define a server that's used to serve the application. This is where the port that we were using is, is configured, and also the host. And uh, we're using Waitress, which is a server that I told you was developed for Python 3 compatibility. And then there's the logging uh, information. So you can see the different sections for, for logging. I think that's really the most useful. The, what? Ah, yeah, here points to the directory where we are. When you use here in a configuration, it points to the directory where, where you're running. So. Pyramid, when, when, when you... Well, actually, Waitress, the, the web server, is, is the one that knows how to. Uh, you can also see that there's another INI file called production. Basically, the difference is that we don't include the debug toolbar. Uh, it's actually a security risk if you were to include the toolbar in a production application. So. So we have a separate production configuration where we don't include that, and we turn off all the debugging tools. Other than that, it's more or less the same, but it's pretty important to be sure to turn off the SQL Alchemy, the, sorry, the debug toolbar. Debug toolbar. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I was just trying to figure out a new aspect of the well, parent. Basically, I, I, you know, uh, um. so this scaffold that we used, uh, it's just one example. They, the other scaffolds are very similar. They, they share more or less the same structure. They have the setup py. You have to run setup py develop to activate them. and, and uh, and use pserve to serve them. Uh, this is one structure that we are familiar with, and, and if you are starting, you, you might want to use the same structure for, for your packages. Like I said, they include both development and production configurations, and they use the waitress whiskey server. To the slide? Uh, this is what I, wa I was saying. We have two uh, templating languages, Mako and CPT. Uh, but there's also bindings for Jinja. So if you like Jinja 2, for example, you can use that. And, well, uh, the typical project right now for, for the audience that we're getting pyramid is uh, uses routes and the relational database, just like the scaffold that, that we saw. And like I said before, we recommend SQL Alchemy, but you can use whatever you want to, 
to access your database. For example, you could use the Postgres driver directly and make the queries directly, and Pyramid doesn't care, you know, as long as you use a response to respond and get the information in the view. Uh, Pyramid is fine. Um, yeah, the Pyramid has also other features that are more slanted toward, towards uh, SOAP X users, but you don't have to know about that at this point. So we already took a look at, this, at the scaffold. This is what we use. So those, those are decisions that the scaffold makes for you. If you use the Alchemy scaffold, you are going to use SQL Alchemy. You're going to use the Pyramid TM transaction manager. You're going to use routes for for defining your URL dispatch mechanism. You're going to use CPT, the template language. And we already took a look at the code. So Pyramid, uh, you have seen that Pyramid usually, uh, when it's run, it, it, it calls a WSGI application. We already saw how, how you respond with an application when you create the configuration. Uh, and this configuration object holds all the routing and view configuration. When we create a, a WSGI application, uh, it has a router, the pyramid has a router, and the router is the one that defines if the route matches or not and chooses the view to pass that we are going to use. That's mainly what Pyramid does is that. It's, it's very good at doing this. It allows you very, lot of, lots of options to setting up the views for defining the, the routes. You can use other mechanism, which is called traversal. So there, it's very flexible for defining different ways of finding the, the views. And uh, that's the, the main task of, of Pyramid. It also offers uh, sessions, authorization, and as you saw, we have templating. So right now, what we're using when we define a route, add route, and then add view, we're using something that's called URL dispatch, where we pass a route, a name, and a pattern. That's what we've been doing in the code. And there are some additional predicates that we, that we could use, for example, we can use a route that only matches if the request method is post or if only matches if the request method is get, and several conditions like that. And uh, the server pyramid chain checks one by one the routes. So the order in which you define the routes is important. Uh, the first one that matches is the one that's, that's used. And pyramid would find a view. Uh, it has a view lookup mechanism that is separate from the routes. As you saw, we added routes and views separately. More about views. We have been using uh, a simple function to, to make a view. Like I told you before, we can use any callable. That is, any function, any class, any instance that has a call method is, is a possible view. The only thing that it has to do is that it, it must accept a request parameter. And it has to return a response, either uh, a response from the pyramid response package or a renderer, uh, or use a renderer to return automatically a response that uses a template. All the views that we configure are registered at application startup. Remember that we have the config scan thing on, on the init file. That's where all the views get registered. So if you have many views, they will all be registered at, at startup. Uh, as you saw, we associate views with routes, and then when there's a match, uh, we pass any, any parameters that it has. There are several view configuration parameters that we can use. For example, we can make a view uh, that only matches for a specific, we usually use route name in, in the examples, route name home, and the view will only be called when the route is, that matches is home. But we can use, for example, the request type or request method. We might want to have a view that only uh, responds to post and only matches when and it's only used when, when we use the method post and a separate view. For example, uh, the login screen might, might show uh, the login form when, when, when you just use get. And if the request uses post, we can use the same code. Uh, 
and a different view to, to show. I'm, I'm going to show that. There are all other predicates that we can use. Basically, a predicate is some condition that you attach to the view that will say, this view will only be used when one of these things is, is true. You can, for example, require that a request parameter is present specifically, and the view will only be triggered if, if the request includes that parameter. You can even create your own. Well, now that we run this one, let's let's change to uh, in the pyramid tutorial. There is a source directory, src. Oh, sorry. What did I do? I was not the little directory. We have a source directory. And you will see that, that inside the source, if, if you go to stage one, you will see that there's a, uh, a distribution with, with a production and development INA files like we used before, the setup py. And there's a BRD, which is the code for the, for the Twitter clone. So to activate this application, uh, let's take a look at the requirements. As you can see, it uses most of the same things that we used uh, before, except we add one package that's called repose time ago. What? Stage zero. It, it was the scaffold, but. Uh, it's nothing, but it, it was actually it wasn't. It has an older version, so I I, I showed you the, the most current scaffold version here. Yeah, stage zero represents the scaffold, the, the way that it gets uh, deployed. Just uh, when you run pcreate and, and alchemy, and stage one is the first <coughs> stage that has any changes. So to, to set up this, we have to do the, the same we did before. Uh, if you use Activate, you can probably skip it. You have to run the Python interpreter that's inside the virtual lamp. And then you will be familiar with, with what follows. <coughs> Let me. Some people are having problem looking at the last row, so it's better. You have to use the same um, BIM Python that you were using when you created the AMP. That's why I use this to make sure I'm using that. Yes? Oh, yeah, I would appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to cough. So if you run this, it would get the requirements. Since we already ran this before, it should be pretty fast and just fetch one package, the repos time ago package. So any everybody was successful? You want to see the command again? Once you run that, uh, things should scroll more or less fast this time because you already ran the other one. <coughs> and then we do the same that we did before. 
would be served. And you should get this when you run the application, which is, it uses the same template, but you now it's also a different thing. And if you type something here, you should see. You remember that we added just one dependency here, it was called repose time ago. That's a, a simple Python model that allows us to calculate the actual values to put here. Instead of a date, it calculates how long ago you put something. So, uh, everybody was successful getting here? As you can see, this is uh, a, an interface similar to Twitter's, where you have a text box and you can type something, and uh, instead of tweeting, we call it chirping, and, and it shows uh, who did what and, and uh, what he commented. Let's look at the code. By now, you will more or less recognize the structure that, that we're using. We always start with import configurator, which is going to be our configuration tool. And we import SQL Alchemy engine from config, it, just like we did on the scaffold. This stage has very small changes to, to the scaffold so that you can see where, where the difference goes. We added a, thank you, Chris. We added an initialized SQL call that we defined be below to uh, create the database ourselves instead of running the populate command. So this time you notice that you didn't have to run the uh, populate alchemy. That's because we are using an initialize routine here. That's a pattern that you could use. Some people like it, some people don't. But. Then we create a configurator in just the same way that we did before. We had a static view, which we also did on the, on the other scaffold. Um, we add a route for home, which is, again, just the same. And then we add two different views. You can see that uh, e even though the views call different code, in this case, they import from views the beardy view and, and in beardy post, which are two different views, they use the same route name. That means whenever people go to the to the root of, of your URL, they can get either one of these two. And to decide which one, uh, we add a predicate, which is request method. In this case, we say request method equals post. That means that this one below will only be called when the request method is post, and the other one above will be called in the other times. So. Um, in that way, we can use the same route to point to two different views. And as I was telling you, we can have many different uh, predicates, like if you have a specific header or a specific uh, uh, parameter passed in in the 
uh, request variables, the form variables. You can examine anything and, and you can set uh, predicates to specify exactly which view will be called. Uh, notice here that instead of having the view code defined here and imported, we are using uh, a path in, as a string for, for signaling which model the, the view we are using. This can, can contain also a, 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 a path to a, an external package. So you could actually pass here uh, package uh, colon and then the, the view name and the module where, where we are going to import it. And in this way, you can use views that are defined in separate packages. In this case, we use the same Birdie views package that we, the module that we are working with. And this is the only difference, actually, with the scaffold, that we are uh, using the initialized SQL and that we are uh, defining two different views instead of one and using the predicate to decide which is going to be which. Both use the same template as well. So whatever the view returns, they will show the same template, which, as you can see, when we went to the application, uh, we get the same result back, the same template, if we just go to the root or if we post something. Whoops, I, I, it's in running. Uh, sorry? Could I put what? What was the... No, this doesn't use a decorator. This uses just the uh, add view. Uh, This one is calling birdie post, and this one is calling birdie view. With rent, uh, you want to return JSON? Yeah, you, you can use AdView. We have a renderer for JSON, so instead of using a, uh, a template renderer, you can use a JSON renderer, and you will get just the, the data, not, not no template. So uh, that's... Also, we have a JSONP render now. Yes. And here are the views. This is the view that you get when, when you get to, to the root of without posting anything. And uh, you can see you define a, the, the session. And then you query the chirp table. Uh, and in this case, we only want those that are served by anonymous. Uh, we don't have any uh, auth authorization right now, so all the posts will be from this author. And then we order them by timestamp descending so that we, we have the newest one on top and then go back. And finally, we pass this to the template. We pass the app URL that we are using, which is always inside the request the static URL that we're using. This is just to use as a shorthand. We could call this same function inside the, the template, but uh, sometimes you want to, to be sure that on only the, to, to have quick access to all the things that you're going to use there on the view. A lab set is, is the, the function that, that will return the actual elapsed time. You see that it says one minute ago, five minutes ago when, when you show a post. And the chirps, the actual, the actual chirps that that are there. We'll take a look at the template shortly. Um, the post view uses the same template, but uh, in addition to passing the same, the same things, the same queries, it adds a new chirp 
that it takes uh, from, from the parameters. So if it finds the chirp inside the, the parameters, which is the text that, that we typed in, in the box, it assigns the anonymous author, creates a timestamp, time which for now, and creates a new chirp using the model from SQL Alchemy, uh, passing in the author, the chirp, and the timestamp. And it adds this object to, to the table. That's, again, that's just SQL Alchemy standard way of doing things. It's not pyramid specific. And we return the very same things. So the template will show the new chirp as part of the, of the page. Any questions? Yes? So in this particular case, we were... So the template... Here, it has a, the form where we define uh, the text area that's called chirp that we are going to use for, for, for chirping. The action, as you can see, is the same app URL that we passed. That means that you don't have to hard code anything. You, you can get uh, the actual URL, even if you change something in the code. You don't have to change the template. And then we have uh, a loop that creates a feed item for every uh, chirp that is in the, in the list. To do that, Chameleon uses the tal repeat, which is an attribute that will repeat uh, whatever is inside uh, any number of times that is defined by, by a list that's passed it in here. So we have a list. If you remember, the template returned chirps, which is a list of results from the database. And uh, in tal repeat, we, we create the variable chirp, which will take one of the chirps for each repetition of the tag. So that way, we will get uh, this repeated various times. One of the principles of uh, Chameleon templates is that uh, you can, since it uses uh, attributes, XML uh, namespace attributes, you could actually pass a template to a designer, and, and he will see the template actually the way it, it was intended to, to be seen. And with, with other languages, when you have Python blogs and stuff like that, if the designer opens the, the template, he will see the Python code or, or, or something like that. So sometimes it's good to, to use that, especially if you work with, with designers that might touch the code. But anyway, what it is, this, this does is just a loop and repeats all of these. And uh, as you can see, it takes information for the chirp object that is uh, iterating in the loop. So it gets the author here. And uh, right now, we use a static image for the avatar. The user doesn't, cannot put that right now. And below that, we also use, put the chirp, the actual text, and the timestamp we defined. We use the elapsed function that we passed in also on the, on the dictionary. And that is the one that formats the The, the date so that when you, oh, it's not running. Well, the one that shows five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago or whatever. And that's it. That's the, that's the template. So you can see, so we have a loop and we used for each direction of the loop, we get one of the results that we passed in here on chips. Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. It, it's the, the the top of the template. I I copied it from the, the standard pyramid template, and it uses the old in the scaffold. But I prefer to use the other, and I actually forgot that the other was on top. But uh, it's it works either way you do it. It it, it doesn't matter. And finally, the model, it's just a typical SQL Alchemy model. It uses to find the, the things that we use on, on the chirps. 
nothing new here. And we have this uh, initialized SQL that we call when we start the application that makes sure that the data is created. It uses SQL Alchemy's Cradle uh, method, which if the database already exists, it just ignores everything. And, and if it's, it doesn't exist, it creates it. So that's the stage one. If you now change to the stage two directory, and run the setup py develop, I put it. I can't find it. Did I change to stage two? Right. Remember, run in Python set up why develop and then you can start the application with pserve. Be sure to run the py develop, because if you don't, it will use the old egg and you will see no changes. Now we get an actual login form. And uh, there are no users to find, so whatever we use here will not work. We have to sign up. The, the what? Uh, it's a warning? No key for you. Yeah, I did. So I don't have that key, so I'm pretty sure I need to set up alchemy, right? Uh, uh, no, this, this runs the create database by itself. Um. You might want to remove the, the, the DB file to make sure that. Uh, are you still, uh, yeah, you're still in there? Yeah, you should be there. But you should it run the setup file? Got that. Again, to to get to this stage, you have to run from inside the stage to the directory. The Python setup py develop, and then uh, you can use pserve.
Uh, you may want to remove the BRDDB files in case something is, is missing and run it again. And the difference this time is that we can register a user and uh, now when we uh, tweet something, when we chirp something, it knows which user did the, the chirp. You're out of luck. <laughs> who who has trouble running running this? Mac. Everybody else was able to run it. Okay. Let's. We also added a logout link here. Now allows us to sign out. And we now have a, a username and password for logging in. We can use the user that we created. So in this case, the init file now has more routes added and uh, a couple more views. We added the join route and the logout route to be able to join and, and log out from, from the site. And uh, the other views right now, they are the same, the first two. But then uh, we add another for the login page, and this is something that that we use to be able. If you noticed, the when you logged in, the user was taken uh, to the to the initial page, but instead of being shown the list of chirps, it, it showed uh, the login form. Uh, this is done by adding another view, yet another one that uses uh, the same uh, route. Well, the same start URL, but it uses a context. And the context that it used is uh, an HTTP exception that is called HTTP forbidden. And that exception is raised whenever uh, a user tries to access some, some code for which it doesn't have permission. In this case, what this does is whenever the user tries to view something, it will redirect to the, to the login view. Uh, if we are using the get method, the user will see the, the login form, and if we use the post method, we use the same context, forbidden, the user will get uh, the chance to, his data will be sent to the form and, and, and he will be logged in. There's also a, a context that you can use for not found views. So if you want to create a specific known, not found view, you can also do this, you create context, pyramid, uh, uh, it's HTTP not found, I think. 
And then whenever there's, there's a, a page that's not found, instead of showing the this page was not found message from, from the server, it will show whatever page you, you want to show here. So you can create customized uh, not found views, or in this case, for forbidden views. And uh, we also add the logout view, which is pretty simple. Just direct and use the route and, and use that, that view. And uh, we also add a view for joining. In this case, uh, they both point to the same template, join PT. But one is used if, if, if the user is just looking at the page using the get method, he will get the form. And if the user has already input some that data, he will see it. he will be triggering the, the post form. So the data will be and then he will be added as a user. So you can see that as we are adding views, the init method gets a little long. So that's why there there is a decorator syntax to to allow to separate things and put the views just somewhere else and all the definition and configuration on top of the view so that you locally know that this view points to this route, et cetera. Uh, I don't think we'll have time, but if, if you look at the code in stage three, the code in stage three uses decorators instead of using this. The first views are just the same that we used before. Instead that now we have a user ID. Uh, and we make sure first we, just, we, we can call the authenticated user ID function that will tell us which user is uh, actually using the page. So when we call this function and passing the request, we will get the user ID of, of the user that's connected. Um, so we, in addition of passing the chirps, we also pass now the, the user ID and the user object that, that we're using. The same with the post, we also add the user ID. And the author was hard code before it was wired here. You, you see that it said just anonymous. Now we use the user that's, that's actually logged in and pass it in when we create the chirp. Everything else is the same. For the login page, we only uh, want to show the, the actual uh, login page, login form. So it's just a, we just pass it in an empty login and an empty message. That's because the template expects uh, to, if, if somebody tried to log in and it doesn't work, he will get a not, not logged in message, and so we can pass it that on the view. In this case, since we are using the same template for both views, we have to make sure that we pass whatever the other template is expecting. And the login form that is called, uh, when there's a post, uses the check login method that, that we, we have. Uh, we'll take a look at it shortly. It's defined in the models. This is the method that will tell us if, if the user is actually uh, an authorized user here or not. And uh, if the login is valid, uh, we use the remember function, which is part of pyramid security. Uh, it was imported at the top. And what this does is add the header uh, to the request to, to so that we know that the user is logged in and we can remember the user. And then we redirect to the start of the page. And since the user is now logged in, he will get the, the list of chirps instead of, of the login form. That's why when I logged in, it immediately showed me the, the, the list of chirps. The logout view uses the, the opposite strategy. Instead of remember, it uses forget, which is 
takes care of, of getting rid of the, of the headers so that the user is no longer recognized. This is the join page. Again, we just pass some variables to the template, and that's enough to display the, the page. And the actual post is done with this join view, which, again, just gets the, the information for the form. Request params get, gets all the, the information that the user passed in on the form. And then uh, it creates a user. <coughs> Uh, pyramid security. It's part of pyramid. Uh, the other. We just add some some stuff to check if the confirm is the same as the password, and if not, we return the page. And if the password is too short, we return again the, the login form. It's, But if we have a valid user and, and a good password and everything, we create a user with SQL Alchemy, add it to the database session, and uh, again, we remember. Uh, immediately after we created the user, we use remember, so that uh, just uh, after he presses enter on the form, he's directed to the list of chirps again. And he's redirected to the, to the start page. And those are the views. Any questions about the views? It's basically the same thing. We define a template, but as you see, we start to have more logic inside the inside the code. You know, we're starting doing more things, and instead of just showing a page, we're actually getting information from the form and doing and doing other stuff. And, and then the models for the user is here. We use Cryptacular, which is an encryption library, yes, to make sure that the passwords are stored encrypted. But it's not required, it's just something that's used here. You see the object, the, the user object is defined regularly as any other table also. But we add here the check login method. And uh, this is the one who knows if, if the user is logged in or not. Cryptacular is used to, to know if, if the password, the hash password, is, is the same as what the user put in. Again, this is, Cryptacular is not a requirement. No, it, it, it's not necessary for doing user authentication in Pyramid, but it's something that's good for making sure your passwords are, are encrypted correctly and, and are secure. The other thing that we do is we use now a root factory, which is a concept that, that is in Pyramid, and allows us to define ACLs, access control lists, and in this case, we want to allow all authenticated users to view what, what we have. Um, yeah, let me show you where, where we, we use that. I don't seem to find it. Oh, 
Um, one other thing that we had in, in the views that I didn't discuss at, at, at first is that we have this permission argument and uh, five minutes. Okay. We have this permission argument and that's the, the permission uses the ACLs that, that we defined on, 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 the, on the view that I, that I showed. So if you see yeah, that collects the, connects the, the ACL here. And uh, you can see that, that uh, the, the post view and, and the regular view are the ones that are protected by, by, the, by this permission. So whenever a user tries to view the list of chirps, uh, he will get, if, if he's not logged in, the permission will not be there because he's not authenticated, like, like we said, in the ACL. So. Yeah, you, you can actually give uh, create ACLs for even for specific objects inside inside the. Uh, does the permission predicate take a list, Chris? Yeah, the permission. So you can associate groups. There's an uh, authentication chapter on the, on the docs that covers everything and, and gives example of how to create a, a group, which is not covered here actually. And, uh, well, we're actually out of time. So uh, I only wanted to show you that on the stage three, we actually uh, Code disappeared. Oh, CD. We changed the the view definitions that are all, all in one single init file. We changed them to decorators. So it works the same. It does exactly the same. But now you have the the configuration locally with the view. So it, sometimes it's easier to find out where exactly. You're going, instead of having to open the other file and see where the view goes, you can have it here uh, with all the predicates, and, and you can see exactly which code is allowed to do what, and, and the, all the predicates that, that you passed in. So as your code grows, I think it's better to use this, this syntax, but uh, it's not obligatory if you are fine with, with having a couple of views on the init file. Maybe that's all you need. Anyway, it's optional. So the stage three adds the followers and, and other stuff, but we run out of time, so I, I won't be able to explain it. I don't know if you have any questions at this point that I could answer before we finish the session. Actually, Pyramid doesn't do anything with, with the database. All the calls that we did with the database are uh, SQL Alchemy calls. Right. So if you want to use uh, your own wrapper, it, it, it's fine. Pyramid doesn't do anything that you, want, you have to, to, to change your wrapper for. Yeah. You can use it just as, as, as you want. A pyramid just calls, uh, if you put code for your database wrapper there, Pyramid just uh, uses that. And, and you, you have to just make sure that your view re returns a dictionary. And you can get the, the, whatever you put inside the dictionary, you can get it whatever you want. 
So you can, you can use your specific database wrapper functions, get the information, and then send it on the response. And Pyramid doesn't care. It's, it's the same. It, it doesn't do anything that's specific to, a, to SQL Alchemy at all. It, it's only that the template includes SQL Alchemy, but other than that, you don't have to use the, the SQL Alchemy scaffold. 